Young Englishman Jonathan Harker travels to Castle Dracula in Transylvania to assist the Count in purchasing an estate in London. As Harker travels through the countryside, the local peasants warn him about his destination, giving him crucifixes and other charms against evil and uttering strange words that Harker later discovers translate to vampire. Nearing his destination, Harker meets the Count's carriage, driven by a mysterious coachman. The coach ride is harrowing, following crumbling cliffside roads and braving marauding wolves along the way. Upon arriving at the moldering ancient castle, Harker finds that the elderly Dracula is personable, well-educated, and hospitable. However, after only a few days, the realization that Harker is a prisoner to the Count begins to sink in. Now, despite the Count's warnings, Harker explores the castle Dracula and realizes that the Count has both supernatural powers and evil ambitions. One evening, Harker is attacked by three seductive female vampires, but the Count saves him, giving his brides a meal of a small child in a bag and telling the vampires that Harker belongs to him. Fearing for his life, Harker attempts to escape from the castle by climbing down the walls, and he eventually makes his way to Budapest, where he ends up delirious from his ordeal. Dracula travels on the ship Demeter to England, along with boxes of earth from his castle. As the ship undertakes his journey, the captain of the ship relates that his crew has either disappeared or gone mad. He's finally left the sole survivor and in his last act binds himself to the helm to maintain a course to England. The ship eventually erects near the town of Whitby and a large dog is seen leaping ashore. The plot then shifts to Harker's fiancée, Mina Murray, who's corresponding with her friend Lucy with Stenra. Now, Lucy's received marriage proposals from three men, Dr. John Seward, Arthur Holmwood, and an American named Quincy Morris. Eventually, Lucy settles on Holmwood's proposal, though all parties remain on cordial terms with each other. Now, both Mina and Lucy meet up for a holiday at the seaside town of Whitby, and not long after their arrival, Lucy begins to sleepwalk, and Mina once finds her in the town cemetery. While trying to aid her friend, Mina believes that she sees a dark form with two glowing red eyes bending over the somnambulating girl. Lucy's health begins to deteriorate as she becomes anemic and lethargic, with two tiny red marks discovered on her throat. Dr. Seward attends to her, but he's baffled by her condition, and he sends for his old friend and mentor, Professor Abraham Van Helsing. Before Van Helsing arrives, Mina receives a letter about Jonathan Harker's condition, and she leaves to nurse him back to health in Budapest. Van Helsing quickly ascertains the nature of Lucy's condition, but he refuses to discuss it, instead festooning Lucy's room with garlic and giving her a necklace of it to protect her. Lucy's mother removes the odiferous herb, and her and Lucy are soon terrified by a wolf. The horror of the situation sends Lucy's mother into a fit of apoplexy and she dies. And despite Dr. Seward and Van Helsing's administration of several blood transfusion, Lucy's health continues to decline, and eventually she too dies. After Lucy's death, the local newspapers begin to report that children are being stalked at night by a beautiful lady. Van Helsing deduces that it's Lucy, though the other men refuse to believe it until they witness her preying on a defenseless child. The party of men congregate at her tomb, and they find her undecayed body slumbering in her casket. Holmwood plunges a stake through her heart, and she's dispatched by beheading and stuffing her mouth with garlic. A recovered Harker and his now wife Mina return to England, and they join the others in their campaign to hunt and destroy Dracula. Using Dr. Seward's asylum as a safe base of operation, Van Helsing's party sets out to track down the boxes of Transylvanian soil and destroy them by placing sacramental wafers in the boxes. They're successful until the Count uses Renfield, who's a vermin-consuming lunatic, to break into the hospital and attack Mina. The Count secretly assaults the young woman three times, eventually causing her to drink his blood on his last visit. So Lucy's now cursed with vampirism upon her death, and the only cure being the destruction of the Count. Van Helsing tracks down the Count in London, but Dracula narrowly escapes and begins heading back to his castle in Transylvania. Now realizing that Mina has a faint psychic connection to her vampiric host, Van Helsing hypnotizes the girl to determine the Count's whereabouts, and the team of vampire hunters set out for Eastern Europe in search of their foe. Arriving in Romania, the hunters split up, with Van Helsing and Mina going to the castle where they seal all the entrances with holy items, and they destroy Dracula's vampiric brides. Harker and Homewood follow a boat that's carrying the Count upriver, while Quincy Morris and John Seward set off to intercept the Count by land. When they finally catch up with the coffin containing the vampire, it's being loaded on a wagon by several of the Count's Romani servants. 
They open the coffin, and Harker decapitates Dracula, while a mortally wounded Quincy stabs him in the heart. At that point, Dracula crumbles into a pile of dust. So Vampire was published in 1981 by uh, TSR, and this was one of their little micro games. The designer was Philip A. Schreffler, and I think this is the only uh, game he ever designed. And the artist was the great Errol Otis. The game is divided into two parts, each with a separate map. There's a uh, The first part of the game involves the players traveling through Transylvania on the Transylvania map, and then the second part occurs within Castle Dracula. The, now, the Transylvania map is made up of several different types of terrain. Clear terrain are areas free from the wild beasts and supernatural creatures. Forest Texas and mountain terrain are inhabited with wild animals known to attack travelers after dusk. And the shaded areas are regions where Dracula's evil powers pervade that area with a sense of dread. And here, supernatural creatures thrive on this atmosphere of doom, and they have no compunction upon preying on the innocent. You'll also note that the large hexes with the names are the areas where Dracula can hide his coffins. And these areas are connected with roads that the character will travel in an attempt to find and destroy the Count's resting places. Several types of counters in the game. First, there's a number that represent the characters that the players will play. There's guardian monsters that the characters encounter in the game. And finally, there's items that the characters can find and use to accomplish their goal of killing the Count. In addition, there are also several counters that represent the characters when they turn into Nosferatu vampires or werewolves. In the second part of the game, there are also two counters that represent the day and night phase of the clock. And this is used for gauging the types and capabilities of the obstacles that the characters face in the game. Now to set up, each player chooses a character that they'll play, and they place that in Klausenberg. Now all 27 of the black counters are turned face down, and three of each are placed in each large hex, except for Klausenberg itself. Play is, divide, play is divided into turns, and each turn has four phases. There's a movement phase. There's also a search or check for encounters phase. And then there's a phase that allows for conversion to Nosferatu, werewolves, or demonic possession. So let's talk about movement in the first part of the game. Each player can move in any direction, but they can't move through the same hex more than once in a turn. And to determine the number of hexes that a player can move through, you simply roll 1d6 and apply this to the type of terrain that the character's moving through. Now, if the character is traveling on a road, they can travel the number of hexes equal to the die roll. If through the clear hexes, they can travel three hexes on a five or six, two hexes on a three or four, and one hex on a one or two. In forest hexes, they can travel two hexes on a four through six, and one hex on a one through three. And finally, characters may only move one hex per turn in mountains. And if the character travels through two different types of terrain, they do so at the movement rate of the worst type of terrain entered. Thus, if a character rolled a four and started on a road hex and then traveled into a forest, they could move a total of two hexes, one on the road and one in the forest. Now, characters do have to move the entire number of spaces allotted. However, once they enter a larger hex or a hex occupied by an opponent, they do have the option of stopping. Now, each roll and movement indicates one day, and characters stop at the end of the day to camp for the night. During this time, there's a chance that they'll have an encounter with a hostile creature. And the nature of this encounter is determined by terrain and a die roll. Note that encounters do not occur in large hexes or clear terrain. Now, all roads are considered the terrain of the surrounding hex for the purpose of encounters. And if the result of the encounter roll is a creature, that creature fights immediately. If it's a strange occurrence, you roll 2d6 and you consult the strange occurrence table. Now, if characters end their movement in a large hex, they can search that area. And to search, they simply turn over the top black counter in the hex. This result may be nothing, a useful item, and in that case you roll on the useful item table, a coffin, which the characters then destroy, or an attack by Count Dracula himself, with no result or victory meaning that the character forces the vampire to flee. Now failure indicates that the character takes a bite before the Count flees after the single round. Once a character searches a large hex, then they have to travel to another large hex and search it before they can return back to the original large hex and search it again. There are two types of combat in the game, melee or physical combat and supernatural combat. And to determine the outcome of combat, you look up the monster on the appropriate combat table and roll 1d6. And you can add bonuses for any physical items and the time of day in the extended game. 
Now, V means that the character's victorious and the opponent is defeated, and the player's turn is then over. A W means that the character's wounded, and in the basic game, the character immediately moves to Klausenberg, where they're healed and can play in the next turn. No result means that the character has to fight another turn with the monster. Now, in the second part of the game, which occurs in Dracula's castle, the character is not returned to Klausenberg when they're wounded, and they die after incurring two wounds. The character does have the option of curing the wound if they skip the next turn, and healing of one wound is considered to have occurred after the end of that turn. Now other results from the combat result table include S, which is for salvation, which occurs with Nosferatu, and it means they're destroyed and removed from the game. B is a bite, and the player character is bitten by a werewolf or vampire. Now three vampire bites turn the character into a Nosferatu, and two werewolf bites turn the character into a werewolf. P stands for possession. The character's body is taken over by a demon, and this lasts for six turns, with the possessed character rolling 2d6 for movement, and they always have to move towards another player character to attack them. If a V is rolled in an attack, the possessed character returns to normal. F stands for fear, and this only occurs in the castle, and it forces the character back to the portcullis. And I stands for immobility. The character loses two turns, and if attacked while paralyzed, they subtract two from the combat result. Let's talk a little bit about vampiric conversion. Now, when a character is bitten three times, they become a Nosferatu, and their counters replaced and all useful items are lost. They then begin moving towards other player characters to attack them, and they roll 1d6, but they're able to move they're able to move the full hexes rolled regardless of the terrain. Now, combat from a Nosferatu attack occurs in any of the hexes except the large ones. An attacker basically makes the die roll to see what happens. Now, when a character Nosferatu player is attacking another, and a V occurs, then they dissolve into a cloud of mist, and they're moved to the crypts. If the character they're fighting is bitten, the vampire is removed from the board and placed in the crypts two turns later. Now, if a player is bit by a werewolf twice, then they lose all their items, and they try to kill the surviving vampire hunters. And they move just like player characters, except they can't enter the large hexes. They don't roll for encounters, and if defeated, they are removed from the board and reappear at the crypt in the next turn. And they can only be killed with a silver bullet. Now, you'll also notice on the Transylvania map the Standing Stones. And if a character spends a turn at the Standing Stones, it cures one vampire bite. Now, this can only be done once per game, and it doesn't affect characters that have already been turned into Nosferatu. Now, the winner of the first part of the game is the first player to find and destroy three coffins. Now, the player that wins enters part two of the game completely healed, and they gain an item of their choice. Now, while all the other characters also get an item of their choice entering the second part of the game, they're not healed of the bites. Okay, a few specifics about the second part of the game. This occurs in Castle Dracula. And the map of Castle Dracula has three types of terrain. It has gray impenetrable walls and thorn patches, white hallways and passages, and green encounter areas. To set it up, you take the 15 red counters and you place them face down in each green area. You also place the vampire hunters in the portcullis spaces, and also the player werewolves and Nosferatus in the tower. You then set the clock to 12 noon. Now in the castle, the following sequence is observed. At the beginning of each character's turn, they move the clock face forward one hour. They then do their movement and reveal any encounters if they end up in a green area. Then combat occurs, and if there is any chance for conversion to Nosferatu, werewolves, or possession, that occurs. And then at midnight, you restock the entire map, that is all the green areas, with the 15 red counters. Also during the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., the vampire hunters add plus one to their supernatural combat rolls. Characters roll 1d6 for movement, and the character cannot move less than their full roll, or move over the same space more than once in a turn. However, if they do enter a green space, they can end their turn and attack. Now, there's only one round of combat for most pieces, except for Dracula, who remains in the room until either slain or the midnight reset. Players that have been converted to either a vampire, a werewolf, or a demon cannot turn over counters. They always move towards the player characters and attack. Uh, immediately after attacking, they respawn at the tower, unless they're permanently destroyed. Now, if a Nosferatu bites a character, they don't reappear at the tower for two turns. And now, when the clock strikes midnight, all the guardian counters are removed and they're placed together with the previously removed counters. They're mixed up and then they're again placed on the 15 green spaces. Now, the game continues in turns until all the players are either are killed or Dracula is destroyed. Here we go with a playthrough of Transylvania or a vampire. Now, I've got my 
uh, map of Transylvania set up here, and I've got in this game I'm going to use uh, Jonathan Harker, Mina Murray, and Van Helsing, Abraham Villa Helsing, as my players characters. Um, this has a map of Transylvania. I've got a little area over here for some counters and the dice. And then I've got uh, some charts right here. That's one thing really nice about this Vassal module is it does have all the charts and rules here. Um, I've got a little word processor set up here so I can keep track of wounds and bites and things like that. Um, that's one thing this doesn't have is any uh, any um, units for it has units for passing the bites along or for showing how many bites they've had but nothing much else so and then I'll put uh, any items gained over here we'll just put those there so let's go ahead and start and I'm gonna have Harker just start we'll just assume he wins the uh, random roll to go first doesn't make a big difference so one two so he goes to this forest hex that does call for an encounter and when you roll for an encounter, you roll 2d6 or 6, 12. A strange occurrence occurs. Okay, let's see what our strange occurrence is. 2d12, so it's a 7. You wake up to the sounds of fluttering wings and find two small punctures on your neck. You have been bitten by a vampire. So I guess that counts as a bite. So we'll give him, uh, we'll just put a 1 there. Okay, Mina Murray goes and gets a four. One, two, three, four. Again, she's in forest, so we do a forest encounter with a seven. That shouldn't be anything. Nope. Okay, no encounter. And then uh, Van Helsing goes and gets a five. I rolled twice, but we'll go with the first one. One, two, three, four, five. He's in clear terrain, so he's good. Okay, Harker, back to Harker. Three, one, two, three, clear terrain, so he's good. Mina Murray goes and gets a three. One, two, three, clear terrain, and she's good. And then Van Helsing goes and gets a three. One, two, three, clear terrain, good. Back to Harker. Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So he's in the forest here. Rolls a nine. No encounter. Okay, Mina Murray gets a one. She's hi, Dr. Van Helsing. And then Abraham Van Helsing gets a two, one, two. So he's able to get into the large hex of the old abbey, takes an item and flips it, and he gets a knife. Okay, so we'll just put Van Helsing has a knife. Now knives add one to your, uh, a knife adds one to your melee combat rolls. Okay. We go back to Harker. Harker gets a three, so he can just land in... Spend his turn and land in, uh, what is the name of the town? Bistritz. Bistritz. And he gets a gun. Uh, Harker will give him his gun here. Harker's gun does two, plus two in melee. So that's going to be handy. Okay, Mina Murray gets three. One, two, and she'll end up in the old abbey. And gets a coffin. Okay, so Mina's got a coffin. Let's give her little thing to indicate her over here. So first coffin has been gained. And they need three to win. Van Helsing goes five. I guess I'm going to send him down here to the cemetery or the tombs or whatever it is. One, two, three, four, five. He's in the mountains. We roll for an encounter and with a four Four in the mountain, mountains is a woof. So he tries to fight the woof with a three. Two, three. He is wounded. Now, since he's wounded, we send him all the way back to Klossenberg. Okie dokie. Harker. Four. And he has to go somewhere else. I guess I'll go one, two, three, four. That puts him in clear terrain. So nothing. Mina Murray goes with a one. Um doesn't really matter. Let's head down here. And so she's in the supernatural area with a two and a one is a three. That does not look good. Let's double check. Three. That's a vampire. So she's got to fight off a vampire. And she doesn't have anything special. 
So we roll a one. So she is bitten again. So she's bitten and the vampire disappears. Okie dokie. Back to Van Helsing. Van Helsing gets a three. He's in forest with a six. I don't think that's anything. Nothing. Yeah. I guess let me try to remember. Forest is anywhere between four and nine. There's no encounter. So most statistically, that's going to be pretty common to not get much. Okay. Harker. Three. He's in mountains and gets a three in the mountains, which is a bear. He's attacked by a bear. He rolls a one, but he's also got a gun, so that gives him three. Two, three. He is wounded, so it ships him all the way back to Klossenburg. Okay, Mina Murray goes and gets a one, but she's in clear terrain at least. Then Helsing goes and gets a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Puts him in supernatural with a six. Um, encounter table of a six at the supernatural is no encounter. Good job, dude. Okay, and then that, we're back to Harker. Five, one, two, three, four, five. He's in forest with a two, which is a vampire encounter, I think. Yep, that's a vampire encounter. Okay, so he's up against a vampire. He gets a four. Uh, his gun's not going to do him any good. So the vampire gets a four. One, two, three, four. So he is bitten. And that's his second bite. So he's either got to win this or get down to those standing stones. Not looking good for Jonathan Harker. Okay. Um, next, Mina Murray goes with a two. She's in the mountains. And that's going to be an eight. Uh, eight in the mountains is a no encounter. Okay, a no encounter. Um, ben Helsing will get his, of course he gets a six. You always get the six when you just need the one. Flip it, and he gets some holy water. Yeah, that's kind of helpful. And we've cleaned out the old abbey. Okay. Harker goes with a three. Uh, I'm going to count that as clear. Mina goes with a three. And that's clear. And then Van Helsing goes with a four. Um, okay. We're back to the Harker with a one. Supernatural area with a... Let's roll it again. Six. A five. I'm sorry. Five. Supernatural with a five. No encounter. Okay. Mina Murray goes with a four. That'll put her right in here so she can check for an item at the crypts. And she gets nothing. So we can discard that. Okay. And then Van Helsing. Four. Three and four. That puts him at the witch's cottage. We flip and nothing. And then we go back to Harker. A three. Well, he'll stop here at the witch's cottage and flips for a knife. Okay. Could be useful. Okay. We go to Mina. Five. Forest. She's ending up in the forest. And with an eight, nothing. Okay. We go to Van Helsing with a six. One, two... Six. He's in a uh, supernatural area, so we get a two, a vampire. Okay, and the vampire gets a four. Uh, does Van Helsing have anything? He doesn't have... Oh, he does. He has some holy water and a knife. Let's see what the holy water does. And I remember... Try to remember that four. Um, Where are you at, holy water? Where are you at? Where are we? Holy water. Here we go. Automatically dispels one demon. Okay, so it doesn't do much against anybody but demons. And the, and the knife's not going to do anything either. So we had that four. We got to remember that. One, two, three, four. So Van Helsing is bit. 
So Harker has two bites, Mina has one bite, and Van Helsing has one bite. And when Harker gets to three, he'll become a uh, Nosferatu. Okay, he makes it to the clear. Mina goes with a four. She makes it to Dra or is this what is this? This is Targivist. Okay. <coughs> Mina's got a second coffin, so she's a, kind of ahead in this. And then Van Helsing goes with a four. One, two, three, three, four. Okay. He's not gonna quite make it to Castle Dracula. We roll for encounters and get an eight in supernatural. A werewolf. There, wolf. Okay, so Van Helsing fights the werewolf. Now, he get, has a knife, and you can use knives on werewolves. They are a uh, melee combat, so I think you can. Two. So he's wounded by the werewolf, and then the werewolf heads out. Okay, back to Harker with a three. One, two, three. He's in a forest, so eight. I don't think that's going to be anything. Nope. Okay. Mina goes and gets a three. Um, she's going to go down to the Sanding Stones. One, two, three. She's in the forest, and she gets a seven, so I know that's nothing. And then Van Helsing gets to go, and he may, of course he gets a six. He makes it to Castle Dracula. He flips it and gets a coffin. Okay. Harker goes. One. He's in forest. Ten. That's an encounter, I think. It's a boar. He's a real boar. Okay. He gets a four, five, six. We had two because he's got a gun. He shoots the boar. Easily wins, and he's fine. Mina goes and gets a two, one, two. She's again in forest, so three, four, five. This is kind of tedious, so I will put a timestamp so you can skip over all this. Um, five, no encounter. Yeah, I mean, a timestamp so you don't have to watch all this. You can go directly to Castle Dracula. Okay. We're back to Harker. Harker gets a two. Flip nothing. And I think I got out of thing. I got out of sync here. Van Helsing. Let's give Van Helsing his turn. One. And we roll a five. In supernatural, nothing. Okay. I'm out of sync. Let's go ahead and put Harker. We'll get back into the routine here. Harker goes and gets a five. It's always terrible when you get the turns messed up. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, he's in mountains, so we'll give him a seven. And that's no encounter. Mina goes. Gets a six. Okay, so she goes down to the standing stones. We flip, and she gets a host. And she also, if she wants to stay there one round, she can cure herself of a bite. I think it's a Nosferatu bite. So we'll do that. We'll just leave her there. And then Van Helsing goes and gets a three. One, two, three. He's in the mountains. Seven, so nothing. And then, so we're next turn. Harker goes. Gets a three. One, two, three. In the mountains, so... Seven. Nothing. Okay. Mina will spend her time here and cure her Nosferatu bite. And then Van Helsing will go with a three. One. Still in the mountains. Seven. Nothing. Okay. Back to Harker. Three, one, two, three. Okay. He ends up at the Borgo Pass with a silver bullet. Mina can go again. Whoops. Five. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. She's in the forest, so she gets a 
six, seven, eight, nine. A nine in the forest is nothing. Then Helsing goes, gets his five. Of course, you get a high roll when you don't need it. And gets nothing. Ah. Okay. We're back to Harker. I think Harker will head back down here to this castle. The ruined castle. One. Okay, so he's in the mountains. With a seven, nothing. Okay. Mina goes and gets a six. One, two, three. Okay, she's going to go to Targa Vista. Flips, nothing. And then Van Helsing will go. And four. He's going through the mountains here. So he's getting a 12. 12 in the mountains is a strange occurrence. So Van Helsing has a strange occurrence, which is going to be a six and a five. So 11. You come upon the body of a recently deceased gypsy. He's carrying a gun. So basically that means Van Helsing has a gun. Now this, ter this game is um, a product of a little different times. So you do see the term gypsy in it. I know that's offensive to some people. Uh, understandably so. Um, so I guess you just say Roma. That's, uh, yeah. So you're going to see that, especially in these old TSR stuff. Castle Ravenloft. My gosh. That, that has to, has been rewritten for a different time today. So. Okay. Who did I? I kind of lost track going there. I think. Did Mina go? Oh, Van Helsing. Okay. So we're back to Harker. Five. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, he's in the mountains, so he gets a six and a five. Eleven in the mountains is a wolf, so he's up against a woof. Uh, Harker has a gun, so he can use that gun. So four, five, six on a woof is a victory, so he's fine. Uh, we go to Mina. She gets a three. Three. Uh, she's in the forest, so she gets a five in the forest. For an encounter, I don't think it's anything. Nope. Okay. And then Van Helsing goes with a two. He's in the mountains. Seven in the mountains is nothing. Okay, back to Harker. One. Okay, he gets one. He's in a supernatural area. Camping out. Four in a supernatural area is a no encounter. Okay, and then Mina goes. With her six. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Down in the crypts. She flips the crypt and she gets the coffins. So Mina is wins the Transylvania game. And so then we can move everybody over to the castle. Uh, here's the castle. Let's get the castle set up for us. And let's give it a, uh, let's make it fit height. There we go. That looks a little better for everybody. Okay, we're going to put Mina over at the side. We'll put her up on top, I guess. And she has a host that she has. Uh, she's cured. I, You know, it's not clear on the curing. I'm going to say she cures herself of everything since so she won. She can take the host. Um... I think I will give her, she gets to choose one item in addition to curing herself, healing up. I'm going to give her a gun. And, okay, let's go with Harker. Harker goes through, he's got a silver bullet, he's got a gun, he's got a knife, and he, he can choose one item. He can't heal himself of anything, but he can choose one item. Um, the hardest thing in this is going to be being up against Dracula. So we want something that helps with the supernatural role. Um, that's going to be the crucifix, I think. Um, yeah, either the crucifix or the host. I will give him a, oh, the host is, I think the host is, oh, I guess not. I guess you can carry the host around with you. So I'll just give him the crucifix. Okay. And then Van Helsing. And Van Helsing has a gun, holy water, and a knife. The knife and the gun will be redundant, but the holy water will help for demons. Okay. That's everybody. Now, Van Helsing and Harker don't cure anything. 
because they didn't win. Um, I guess you could technically say Mina would go first. I'm going to keep the same order. And we need to populate with the monsters. Uh, the hardest part is keeping track of time on this. Um, I tend to get to making moves with characters and then not reset and resetting the clock. So I'll have to try to remember that real hard. Here's my clock. I like the clock better. I wish the vassal module would have used the original clock from the game because it's cool with the weird faces and stuff. Okay, Harker, you get to go first. So we set the clock ahead an hour. We go with a six. Um, we will go make the most of your moves. So he's going to make it to the uh, gypsy hut and flip over. There's a gargoyle there. Okay, so combat with a gargoyle is, let's go down here. Is that supernatural? Or is it? It is supernatural. Okay. So now it's during the day. So we get he gets a plus one on his die. And he gets a silver crucifix. So that's a two that he gets on his die. And he gets an eight against the gargoyle, which is a victory. So the gargoyle goes to the discard pile. We'll put it right there. Now... Mina will go, and yeah, we set the clock ahead an hour to two o'clock, and she gets to go three. One, two, three. Well, that'll be that'll work. Okay, and then Ben, we set the clock again another hour. Van Helsing goes with a three, three. Okay, set the clock ahead an hour and roll for Harker. One, two, three. Mina. And Mina rolled a three. We'll go to the old carriage house. We flip it, and that's some gypsies. Now we roll for how many of them? And that's three of them. So she has to fight three. She does have a gun. So she gets a five, six, seven, eight. So she easily gets those guys. Okay, last hour of daylight for Van Helsing. And he gets a three. He'll go in here. And get runs across some zombies. Now zombies are physicals, and he has a gun, so he gets oh easily takes care of those guys. Okay, it's now seven o'clock. It's now dark, so the player characters don't get a uh, supernatural combat bonus. Uh, I'll again. Actually, he had a six. I'll go take it. One, two, three, four, five. He goes to the catacombs. And we flip and they guard. This is a funny one that they made the counter for this, but we don't have any description in the rules for what the day guard is. At least I could not find anything. I'm going to give him a freebie. Okay, Mina goes. It's 8 o'clock and she gets a 6. One, two, three, four, five, six. She's in the dining room with Dracula. Boy, that just that makes that let's just I think I actually had this when I was setting up the rules I set this exact situation up where they're sitting at opposite ends of the table um she's got to go she's got the host so that gives her a plus one and if she would have done this two hours earlier she would have had a plus two so she needs at least a six to win the game she gets a five which isn't bad because it's an in which is no effect but Dracula don't go nowhere so he's going to stay there and they're going to keep fighting. They're going to basically sit across the table and give each other and glare at each other. Okay, back to Harker. Harker, it's nine o'clock and Harker rolls a five. One, two, three, four, five. He's going to try to help her. Then we go to 10 o'clock and Van Helsing tries to go with a six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and then Mina tries to go. And she gets a six and a seven. And I think that's it. That's game because we had a host and that's victory over Dracula. So Dracula is defeated. Uh, a couple things I think would have been different. If someone would have been bitten, what you would do, let's say Harker got bit. He got bit. Change your counter to a Nosferatu. And you'd set him up at the tower here. 
and then he would move towards the players. And that's usually what happens is some, usually I have the, uh, if there's like three or four characters, I'll have two or three of them as werewolves or Nosferatu, and they will eventually overcome the characters. So the count doesn't even have to do any work, but Mina Harker was able to take the host and stick it in the count's, uh, mouth and run a stake through his heart right on his dining room table and then cut his head off. And that was the end of the count. So that's vampire. Um, I think it's kind of cool. It's got some neat little stuff. It's of course it's real luck driven, but it brings back a lot of memories. I have a lot of nostalgia value for this game. Um, it reminds me of going to, uh, McLeod's bookstore in Wichita at Towny square mall. And, uh, picking up these games. I'd save up my money from allowance and do an odd job so that I could buy these little games. And gosh, it seemed like they were just major purchases, you know, over the years, you, you make a lot of purchases on stuff and it's those ones that you saved up for and everything that you bought when you were a kid that really stick in your mind. I mean, you can buy a house or a car and not really think a whole lot about it later on other than paying the mortgage or the payments. But this definitely had some value in that respect. Um, of course, it's not quite, it doesn't quite live up to the hype that I had when I was 13 years old. But anyway, that's what I got for this week. I appreciate you guys watching. And if it's Halloween season, so happy Halloween. Uh, next month, we'll be back doing some World War I games. And I'll probably be doing some Eastern Front stuff. I'm kind of in the mood for that. Come December, it looks like Fredericksburg and Battle of the Bulge. Um, I'm going to try to move into a few fantasy war games in as the year rolls around. Probably February, start to go to some... Thinking of doing some uh, science fiction during then. So that's kind of the next few months got planned out. Um, if I don't make it, I've always got a bucket full of games that I can draw from that I can put a video up every week. I really appreciate you guys watching. It's been pretty amazing. Some of the comments I've gotten have been just fantastic. And... I mean, if you have a negative comment, leave it down below. Um, definitely there's learning experiences. I oftentimes I foul up rules during the middle of the game. I just get caught up in the moment and forget something. Um, and pointing that out, it doesn't bother me at all. I really kind of like to hear that. I learn a lot. And when I go back and replay that, I look for the comments to kind of make my game playing a little bit better. So that's what I got, but thanks a lot. I'll talk to you later. Bye.